Hi there. We are back for the first section of part the second of Evangeline, A Tale of Acadie. Now, if you remember, we ended with very serious, very sad tidings about Evangeline separated from her fiance. Her, her home, her entire home burned and her father dead on the beach and her put into a boat and taken away as prisoner and nobody knows where. So I have a few questions about it. I want to know, did she and Gabriel find each other? Did they all go to the same place? Um, was she able to get married to him? Did they make a life for themselves? Will they ever be able to go back? Or did they make a new start in a new place? Are they still prisoners of um, the English crown? So I guess we won't know until we read it. So let's take a look. This is part the second, section one of Evangeline. Many a weary year had passed since the burning of Grand Pre, when on the falling tide the freighted vessels departed, bearing a nation with all its household good, gods into exile. Exile without an end and without an example in story, far asunder on separate coasts the Acadians landed. Scattered were they like flakes of snow when the wind from the northeast strikes a slant through the fogs that darken the banks of Newfoundland. Friendless, homeless, hopeless, they wandered from city to city, from the cold lakes of the north to sultry southern savannas. From the bleak shores of the sea to the lands where the father of waters seizes the hills in his hands and drags them down to the ocean, deep in their sands to bury the scattered bones of the mammoth. Friends they sought, and homes, and many despairing, heartbroken, asked of the earth but a grave, and no longer a friend nor a fireside. Written their history stands on tablets of stone in churchyards. Long among them was a scene, a maiden, who waited and wandered, lowly and meek in spirit, and patiently suffering all things. Fair was she and young, but alas, before her extended, dreary and vast and silent, the desert of life, with its pathway marked by graves of those who had sorrowed and suffered before her, passions long extinguished, and hopes long dead and abandoned, as the immigrant's way or the western desert, desert is marked by campfires long consumed and bones that bleach in the sunshine. Something there was in her life incomplete, imperfect, unfinished, as if a morning of June, with all its music and sunshine, suddenly paused in the sky and fading, slowly descended into the east again from whence it had late arisen. Sometimes she lingered in towns till, urged by the fever within her, urged by a restless longing, the hunger and thirst of her spirit, she would commence again her endless search and endeavor. Sometimes in churchyards st strayed and gazed on the crosses and tombstones, sat by some nameless grave and thought that perhaps in its bosom he was already at rest, and she longed to slumber beside him. Sometimes a rumor, a hearsay, an inarticulate whisper came with its airy hand to point and beckon her forward. Sometimes she spake with those who had seen her beloved and known him. But it was long ago, in some far-off place or forgotten. Gabriel La Genese, they said. Yes, we have seen him. He was with Basil the blacksmith, and both have gone to the prairies. Cours de Bois are they, and famous hunters and trappers. Gabriel La Genese, said others. Oh, yes, we've seen him. He is a voyageur in the lowlands of Louisiana. Then they would say, dear child, why dream and wait for him longer? Are there not other youths as fair as Gabriel? Others who have hearts as tender and true and spirits as loyal? Here is Baptiste Leblanc, the notary's son, 
who has loved thee many a tedious year. Come, give him thy hand and be happy. Thou art too fair to be left to braid St. Catherine's tresses. Then would Evangeline answer serenely but sadly, I cannot. Whither my heart is gone, there follows my hand and not elsewhere. For when the heart goes before like a lamp and illumines the pathway, many things are made clear that else lie hidden in darkness. Thereupon the priest, her friend and father confessor, said with a smile, O oh, daughter, thy God thus speaketh within thee. Talk not of wasted affection, affection never was wasted. If it enrich not the heart of another, its waters, returning back to their springs like the rain, shall fill them full of refreshment. That which the fountain sends forth returns again to the fountain. Patience, accomplish thy labor, accomplish thy work of thy affection. Sorrow and silence are strong, and patient endurance is godlike. Therefore, accomplish thy labor of love till the heart is made godlike purified, strengthened, perfected, and rendered more worthy of heaven. Cheered by the good man's words, Evangeline labored and waited. Still in her heart she heard the funeral dirge of the ocean, but with its sound there was mingled a voice that whispered, was, was there a voice that whispered, despair not? Thus did that poor soul wander in want and sheerless discomfort, bleeding, barefooted over the shards and thorns of existence. Let me say, let me essay, O oh muse, to follow the wanderer's footsteps, not through each devious path, each changeful year of existence, but as a traveler follows a streamlet's course through the valley, far from its margin at times, and seeing the gleam of its water here and there, in some open space and at intervals only, then drawing nearer its banks through sylvan glooms that conceal it. Though he behold it not, he can hear its continuous murmur, happy at length, if he find the spot where it reaches an outlet. That last part was meant to say, let's not talk about every single different place she went. But it's interesting to notice she's keeping she's keeping a fire burning for Gabriel, isn't it? Yeah. All right, till next time.